a clot hits your brain, in the next 60 minutes, millions of neurons will fight for survival. And here's the chilling truth. Your brain knows it's dying and still tries to save itself. Minute zero, the occlusion begins. A clot, often from atrial fibrillation or a ruptured carotid plaque, lodges inside a cerebral artery. Blood flow stops. Oxygen vanishes. In six seconds, neuronal firing slows. By 30 seconds, electrical silence. But neurons aren't dead yet. They're suffocating, waiting for rescue that might never come. At two minutes, the ATP runs out. The sodium potassium pumps, the electrical heart of every neuron fail. Sodium floods in, potassium leaks out, the cells swell, but here's something most textbooks skip. This swelling compresses neighboring capillaries, which worsens the ischemia. The brain starts strangling itself from the inside. At five minutes, the glutamate storm begins. The brain's main excitatory neurotransmitter spills out uncontrollably. It's like a room full of neurons screaming at each other nonstop. Each one firing, overstimulating, and dying. This is excitotoxicity, neurons killing their neighbors through electrical chaos. And the death doesn't stay localized. These neurons send waves of depolarization, literal electrical shock waves that march outward, turning the surrounding tissue into a death zone. 10 minutes in, the calcium invasion begins. Under normal conditions, calcium triggers learning, repair, memory. But now, it triggers death. Calcium activates proteases, lipases, and endonucleases, enzymes that slice up membranes, proteins, and DNA. And your mitochondria, your cells' power plants, try to absorb that excess calcium until they burst releasing cytochrome C. That's the molecular signal for apoptosis. Your powerhouse is just turned into suicide switches. By 20 minutes, the microglia wake up. Your brain's immune soldiers start firing cytokines, chemical SOS beacons meant to call for help. But help doesn't come. Instead, these cytokines summon white blood cells, which can't even cross the brain's tiny vessels. They pile up, releasing toxins that make the damage worse. Your immune system has just declared war on your own neurons. At 30 minutes, the blood-brain barrier begins to collapse. That tight shield separating blood from neurons, gone. Plasma seeps in. Proteins follow. Water floods the tissue. The brain swells, but the skull can't expand. The result? Rising intracranial pressure. The swelling squeezes the brain stem, the very center that keeps you breathing. And at this point, you might think, can't we just give glucose or oxygen and fix the problem? But it doesn't work that way. Because the moment you give dextrose, the extra glucose leaks through that broken barrier. Osmotically, it pulls even more water into the brain, raising the ICP further. Same with oxygen. If reperfusion happens too late, oxygen radicals flood in, triggering reperfusion injury, basically the brain catching fire at the molecular level. So more oxygen and sugar, they don't heal the brain, they can actually kill faster. By 40 minutes, cytotoxic edema turns into vasogenic edema. Now both the neurons and the blood vessels are leaking. Every millimeter of swelling pushes against healthy tissue. The pressure starts distorting the brain's shape, herniation risk rises. This is why every second counts, because at this point, you're not just fighting a clot, you're fighting physics inside a closed skull. At 50 minutes, neurons in the penumbra begin to surrender. These are the maybe cells, not dead, not alive, hanging by a thread. They can still be saved if you restore flow now. But every passing minute expands the infarct core, the dead zone, and shrinks the rescue zone. At the 60 minute mark, the damage is largely irreversible. Neurons in the core are gone. The penumbra is fading. For every minute a stroke goes untreated, you lose 1.9 million neurons, 14 billion synapses, 
and 12 kilometers of myelinated fibers. That's equivalent to aging your brain by 3.6 years every hour. And once this cascade starts, there's no pause button. Now, if you intervene early with TPA or mechanical thrombectomy, you can restore perfusion and save the penumbra. But late reperfusion? That's dangerous. Oxygen rushes in, free radicals spike, and the reperfusion injury begins, sometimes turning a partial stroke into a full-blown hemorrhage. Even healing can kill if it comes too late. This is why the brain is the cruelest battlefield in medicine. It doesn't wait for you. It collapses minute by minute while you fight to pull it back from the edge. So when we say time is brain, we're not being poetic, we're being literal. Because after the first hour, the clock stops.